Good morning on November 1st. It's Tuesday. Time for another delicious episode of the 359 Podcast <laughs> with Ben Fox Rubin and Alfred Eng. What are you laughing about? Mm, that was a really mm. nice intro. Thank you so much. I try. Delicious. It's nice to be back. It's nice to be back. Thank you very much. We're glad. I'm glad we survived last week. Jeez. It, it's good to have you back, Fresh Cuts. That was, that was in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hey, I had to keep up with you, man. So, <laughs> um, anyway, today we're going to be talking about Google's 3D sensing camera tech called Tango. It's coming to its first phone, first consumer phone ever. And you could buy it today if you wanted to. And we're also going to be discussing our conversation with Microsoft's head of devices, Panos Panay, and what he had to say about the Surface Dial. We'll see if we can get to some more else after that, but I think that's about it for today's show. As always, uh, send in your questions and comments. We'll try to get to as many as possible at the end of the show. And I think that's about it. Anything else to add in? Uh, let's get the show started. Let's do it. Let's get it started, and we'll start the recording of the podcast in three, two. Welcome to the 359, where we talk about the top tech news of the day, plus whatever else we want to throw in. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. The first phone using Google's 3D sensing Tango camera technology is on sale starting today. It's the Lenovo Fab 2 phone. Oh, sorry. It's the Lenovo Fab 2 Pro. It's a 6.4 inch device starting at $499. Cameras technology, if you don't know what it is, uses two cameras to measure objects. Uh, when you're looking right at them, or it adds virtual objects to the real it, into real world pictures, kind of like Pokemon Go. What do you think of this? Is let's, this cool stuff? Let's just forget about this as a phone in general. I mean, just looking at it for its camera functionality, it it, it does feel like Pokemon Go on like steroids and yeah. anything. Um, I'm very excited about the the furniture feature that they were showing off, right. where you can kind of like take stuff from online and then just point it at you know at something in your house to see what it look like. I think that's one of like the most obvious usages. Yeah for this type of technology. And I think this is like a, that's that's like an easy way to do it. It's on your phone. You can just kind of walk around your apartment to do it. I think I think it's a good building block and step to what basically, you know, augmented reality needs to be to, you know, just be in everyone's pockets. Totally. I'm, I don't think it should be its own device, but you know, I think there's building blocks to this kind of stuff. So I, I think it's important that they, they roll out something like this and then eventually it'll just be on every device, most yeah. likely. Yeah, yeah, One of the important things to mention, too, is that more Tangle-enabled phones are expected next year. So this is just the first one. And as you said, this, this could get revised or it could get streamlined as it continues being added in. One of the things that I also like about this is that you know, like with the Oculus Rift or the Microsoft HoloLens, these are like these big, chunky devices. Mm -hmm. You have to stick them on your head and you're kind of like divorced from the rest of the world when you're doing it. I kind of think that this is a great way to introduce people to AR, kind of like Pokemon Go did. Yeah, I think this is um, has a lot of opportunity for gaming. They were showing off this kind of like racing game that was uh, based yeah. off of... Um AR with their camera. Uh, I think it has a lot of great potential. You saw how Pokemon Go took over the world. Um, totally. It's interesting to see what they'll do next with it. There's a lot more gamers that are trying to get outside more and use augmented reality as a part of it. So, you know, using, you know, uh, something that can scan like the objects in, you know, in your surroundings just using the camera sounds incredible. Because yeah. Pokemon Go is different. It was using your camera and your GPS, but it wasn't like scanning stuff. So I'm saying, I'm thinking, you know, in these terms, they might even be able to take stuff and put it to scale with like your surroundings. Yeah, definitely. Wanted to get to the next story. Our own Scott Stein chatted with Microsoft's head of devices, Panos Panay, when he was in town for the Microsoft event last week. Panay hinted that the Surface Dial, which is a new kind of accessory that can be placed right on a touch screen, is just the beginning or could be just the beginning for a new, sets, new set of accessories. What do you think about that? I think it's really cool. I, you know, I was very excited to learn that the dial could uh, wasn't just for the Surface uh, Studio. That you know, the that's way right. that they were showing off, you could put on any Windows 10 uh, device that was compatible with it. And I think that's the way to go with it. You know, you don't want these you know crazy awesome devices attached to like three thousand um, dollar desktops and things. Oh, like that. Oh, you mean accessories? Like yes. this really cool little yeah. accessory. You don't want that. Like oh, but that only works with this thing. Right. <laughs> you have to um, spend three thousand dollars to use it. I'm curious to see what other you know, you know accessories they're thinking about putting out there. The most obvious one seemed to be a pen, but you know they they, they already, have, already have that. You and know then, what would be cool. Mm -hmm. If they just added like um, like a touch bar onto their <laughs> Surface Book, sorry, I totally stole that joke from you, but uh, no, they're probably not going to do that. I really think it'd find be pretty that easy to do too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I 
my imagination is failing me here on, you know, what, what else could yeah. be there. Yeah, the Surface dial is totally different. So uh, it will be interesting to see what else Microsoft comes out with. Anyway, if we want to read more about these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. Thanks for listening. And thanks for sticking with us in the chat. I'm going to start looking at the questions right now. Um, a lot of people do like the dial. I think we're on par with that. We like the dial, too. Yeah, and it's only 99 bucks, by the way. I, really? I guess, okay, granted, only is is not the nicest. Like, some people might not want to pay that much. But How much was the Apple Pen? Uh, God. Pencil, whatever Apple the Pencil. I will look it up right now, but I'm almost positive it's more Are we doing Price is Right style on this? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was 149 or something. Off the top of my head, but I might be wrong about that. I'm going to go with 99. 99. It was 99. Okay, so you can either get an Apple Pencil or a Surface Dial for $99. I'm more interested in a dial. Or you could buy Amazon Prime for a year. I'm going to go with that one. (laughs) Apples and oranges. Hey, uh, Slide wants to know, do you think 6.4 inches is just too big? In, that is in, definitely very big for me. And that's a personal question. Yeah. That, is, that is a we personal question. might need context. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we just got scammed, dude. We just got... All right, I, that's fine. A little mischief night. Uh, Michael <laughs> no, thinks... I think he's talking about the Tango phone. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Um, I, I, I wouldn't... Abso- absolutely, it's... <laughs> what, what do I have? I have an iPhone 6, and that's... Five? A seven plus 4. is four point seven. Yeah, seven plus is like five point five, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, so like six point four. Like no, no. I think they're trying to get people excited and interested in the. Just in get the a phone. tablet. Then why didn't point. they just go to a tablet? Yeah. Michael wants. Michael says that they should have just made a tablet. Yeah. Tango, not a not a smartphone. I think tango. the idea is it's like they wanted it something in everyone's pockets. You know that it's accessible like that to give a lot more outreach with it. But I I agree. Six point four is a little bit ridiculous. Just make a tablet. Here's. A small possibility that it, they may have needed to make it that big, at least initially, so that the two different cameras that are used for this 3D sensing could be far enough apart and they could put everything else into the phone. That is just a theory. I'm just throwing it out there. But because this is the first one out in the market, maybe they had to make the phone a little but bit like, bigger to make cram it, everything the, in like, there. I think the, the point is, though, why make it a phone? Why make it a phone? Uh, because that's they like the primary. They want to infer the idea of like, it's going with you everywhere, baby. Yeah, I don't that's, know. that's that, what that's I was saying. The rhetoric. The, it's and that's the primary the, the vehicle tablet market for most is devices. Shrinking. Yes. Yeah. Which was the story that we were going to get to. <laughs> the, hidden, the hidden character. The hidden, that was our Easter egg story <laughs> so that t- we were going to mention that like the tablet market is doing very, very poorly. So uh, it makes a lot of sense that they would do a phone because mm. phones just sell better than yeah. tablets these days. That's true. Do we want to take a look at that story as a little bonus here? Yeah, why not? For our loyal viewers. For our loyal viewers. It won't that be in the regular watching. podcast, but exclusive to you on YouTube. Right. So this is this is something that's been going on for quite some time. And researcher IDC just came out with their quarterly report. Apple is still number one ahead of everybody else as far as tablets are concerned with tablet sales for the third quarter. However, they've been seeing shrinking demand for the tablets for a really long time. A big reason for that is, is that you buy a tablet, you don't need to replace it after two years. Years. You don't need to replace it after three or four years sometimes, or even more than that. Um, what was interesting about this report, too, is one of the guys that was actually coming out with a, a lot of sales, a lot more sales than they did last year, was actually Amazon, because they sell these low-cost tablets. You could throw them at your kids. Not literally. <laughs> not, but um, What is going on at the Rubin house? <laughs> a lot of people a lot of people probably just want like a simple tablet yeah. that they could use and like have their kids use and if they break it, whatever, no big deal. Yeah, and I so, use the I use the fifty dollar tablet. Yeah. I, I'm okay with it. I, it's, hey, it's not perfect. It's not the greatest. It doesn't thing I've do used. what the iPad does, no. but that most people a lot of people don't need that. And so that seems to be the main growth area for the tablet market. Can you put these Netflix days. on it? Can you answer an email on it? You know I haven't used the Fire tablet. I I have like um I mean, a I'm, different Amazon tablet and it works just fine. That's what I mean. Know? Like yeah. the kind of simple core basic yeah. like and mega browsing, universal emails, remote. Et yeah. Yeah. And it's plasticky. The back is plasticky, the front is glass, um, the screen's perfect perfectly fine maybe the touch screen isn't like completely perfect like i've tried out ipads before and like yeah it's a totally smoother device that kind of thing however you're paying so much more money for it that like i'm willing to deal with getting a slightly worse yeah. product for like yeah, whatever yeah i get your point i get your point on why the tablet market is shrinking now because like i look at that tablet and unless that like cracks or like you know craps out on me i'm yeah. perfectly fine with um 
just sticking around yeah, with it, even it's, though it's, it's like slower than normal. People have figured out, or the major tech companies have figured out that a tablet market is a lot like the desktop and laptop market that you really do not need to replace a tablet after like five years or something. Maybe Samsung was onto something by uh, inferring a self-destruct mode. <laughs> Back to the topic at hand. Can Tango be used for mapping applications? Uh, that is definitely one potential. Yeah, use that case was that was it. one of the. I can't imagine that not being at the top of the list. That yeah. would be really cool too. Because that was actually one of the points made in the story. Yeah, where it's like it's got like new GPS features on it. Well, they were comparing it to the uh, original GPS, right? I think one of the things that I find kind of annoying when using Google Maps is that um, when, you're, when you're doing it for like walking directions as opposed to like driving directions or something, it's not as easy to use. It's just not as seamless. Mm -hmm. So that would be kind of cool if they could just use like 3D sensing technology to just add the directions like directly onto your phone. So you just see an arrow while looking at the real yeah. world. Yeah. Um, it would be cool if there was like a crowdsourced thing like that, kind of like with Waze. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like people like taking scans of things like throughout like basically like a like a crowdsource like Google Street View. Yeah. Like using like AR. Yeah, That'd be pretty that's cool. an idea. I don't know. You can have people, that one People for free. obviously sound like people are certainly interested in AR. I think a little bit more than VR potentially at this point. Um, I because, think, yeah. because like Pokemon Go showed that. You're, you're actually possible. connected to the real world. I think like VR's got great technology, but at the same time it's like, I think it's still got this like connection with it where it's like, w what are you doing when you're just, you know, anytime I use a VR like headset the in the time. office, anytime I use a VR headset in the office, I take it off and I feel like I just woke up from a long nap and I'm like, what, what's I just, going on here? I just what feel, year is it? I, I just feel disappointed in the real world and want to go back. <laughs> really? Isn't it's that funny. kind of the goal, lawnmower man? <laughs> you should try. You should try. We have the new PlayStation one. I played Valkyrie for a while. Mm -hmm. It was pretty fun. So you should try that one. That's out. what I'm doing at work all day today. The <laughs> PS4. I did that on Friday. So I don't know if anybody on the chat has tried um, the new uh, PlayStation one, but I I will say I enjoyed it. I thought it was. But like, fun imagine to that. Like in to. terms of like AR though, like compared, like if you can do something like that from your phone. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess that's the idea with I don't Tango, think that, though. I don't think you could play Valkyrie on your phone, but in, in the same like, immersive similar. way. Yeah. Uh, Michael comments, I bought an iPad Pro 9.7 inch, had it for two weeks and returned it. All it did was collect dust. And in a similar fashion. Slim. But how good was it at collecting dust? It was so good. <laughs> it was the most beautiful dust collector you've ever seen. He is also in the market for replacing his uh, 2014 MacBook Air 13 inch. What do you think he should get? Oh, that's such a hard question. Aren't you also in the market for replacing your laptop? Yeah, which is why I know that's a hard question. You know, I actually looked at the Surface Book for a little while. I feel like um, touchscreens are really interesting and they're just, they, it's just much more intuitive to use. So I'm personally looking at a Windows based touchscreen uh, uh, laptop at this point. I would probably say one of the, um, best ones out there right now is the Dell XP 13 or 15. That one gets a lot of really good ratings. I wish the HP Spectre had a touchscreen. I don't think that it does yet, but that's also like a beautiful, beautiful design. So those are two interesting ones. Um, also, the new MacBook Pro, the 13 inch without the touch bar, I thought was certainly a consideration. Comparable. If you want to, if you want to jump in, if you want to stay in the Apple universe and you're willing to spend fifteen hundred dollars, uh, I think that that, if you have a MacBook Air, that's that's probably going to be the closest thing that you're going to yeah. get to it. But join, it's a lot of money. Join that dongle life. That is that is definitely a major issue. Yeah, for sure. But hopefully that was helpful. Yeah, I would yeah. make the argument that at this point, you know, if the laptop that you're getting should have some kind of touch capability with it, whether it be a bar or the screen. Just, I wasn't that sold. I I don't know how much you guys. I was more like, so talking about the screen. I like, do you know, like it's been so long now that like laptops have had touch screens that it's just I feel like that should be a standard at this point. It is for for the Windows based ones. They yeah. certainly are. So, but either way, Michael, I'm I'm still doing research myself. So those were just a couple of ideas that I had uh, been considering. So, and I would definitely say look at the Surface Book because um, I I definitely thought that it had a lot of those check marks in there. So shameless self plug. I don't know what exactly is coming through, but I know Dan Ackerman in the PC Lab and uh, working on some laptops here coming up very soon. He's got mm -hmm. a pretty stacked schedule, so there'll be some new stuff to look at. So keep an eye. Out for him yeah definitely ask brian tong from cnet how to dongle 
It sounds like a really bad dance craze. Like the next Macarena. That just hit. sounded dirty. The that dongle. sounded dirty like uh, like what we were talking about earlier. About the 6.4 inch. 6.4 inch dongle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now I'm, I'm officially blushing. Welcome this to the dongle. Horrible. We've I'm, got I'm, fun and games. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm so glad I went back on the podcast. <laughs> do we have any more questions or are we going to wrap it? I think it's about time to wrap it. Thanks, everybody. All right, let's do it. Happy Halloween, everybody. That A was yesterday, delayed. dude. <laughs> I know, I know, but I wasn't on. Anyway, the 359 podcast is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, FeedBurner, Google Play Music, and of course on CNET.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow.